I've been using uh, <laughs> lots of applications are built using a combination of, of various models. Uh, I think, uh, in fact, that the last hack hackathon, Berkeley GW had OpenACC and OpenMP in the same uh, program. So and you could decide between the two at runtime. Uh, a lot of people use CUDA when they really need it. And maybe that's like 1% of the code, but it could be, you know, a large percent of the overall uh, execution time. So, you know, those of us that have been around for a while, remember when we used to write x86 assembly or assembly for even older processors than that, for that tiny little bit of code that uh, needs to run as fast as possible. So uh, feel free to mix and match. It's a goal of ours at NVIDIA that these all models are all interoperable to the extent that we can make them interoperable. So what do we mean by that? Uh, first, different programming models can appear in the same source file. So sometimes that's easier than others. Uh, uh, in Fortran, we have control over all of the compiler, both the, the CPU compiler, the OpenMP compiler, the OpenACC compiler, and the CUDA Fortran compiler. So uh, interoperability within a file is actually pretty easy for us. With NVCC, it's a little more difficult. Really, only NVCC can compile uh, GPU code, as Max showed, the kind of global uh, uh, functions that are the entry points into a kernel. And there are also device functions which are commonly used. Uh, Max didn't go into that, but global kernels can call device functions. Um, another uh, 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 definition, objects from different programming models can be linked together into the same program. And uh, one programming model can use data declared or defined or initialized in a different programming model. So we've shown some examples of that, uh, you know, uh, using OpenACC or OpenMP to uh, manage the data, and then how to get the device pointers to call into CUDA libraries with that. Uh, a little harder part uh, of interoperability means, can I generate a kernel using OpenACC or OpenMP and call device functions, which are written in CUDA? And our support for that is pretty good. And there are a few places where it's lacking. When I talked about um, standard PAR on uh, yesterday, I noted that currently inside do concurrent, we have problems calling functions that aren't pure. And then all of our CUDA functions to do you know, CUDA low level things that you might want to do are not marked as pure yet. And that's a problem we're trying to solve for interoperability. And programming models can share attributes of a de device such as the current device, current context and streams. We also showed some examples of that, how we can share the stream between OpenMP and OpenACC and CUDA libraries. So that's important. And uh, Max didn't show this yesterday, or excuse me, just in the previous uh, talk, but in the Chevron uh, configuration, when you launch kernels, an optional argument is the stream number. So, uh, so that is useful. And in fact, uh, given people that are trying to get speed of light out of their kernels, you know, controlling the streams is is critical. <clears throat> um, just so you, to prove that you can. Uh, uh, use all these uh, models you know, in the same program as a, as a kind of a toy or a joke. I wrote you know, a, a five line Fortran program and compiled it different ways, turning on the flags dash MP, dash ACC and dash CUDA. And you can see that we can create a, a program that uh, you know, uh, accepts OpenMP, OpenACC and CUDA Fortran in any combination. And the sentinels in the upper left, I don't think we really talked about it, but it's a nice way 
at least in Fortran, to do like macro preprocessing so that you recognize some statements when you're compiled a certain way and don't recognize them in the other. And it's equivalent to the, the light gray box down below using if defs. So you can also use these if defs in the same program. And uh, it's defined in OpenMP and OpenACC to set these macros. And I believe NBCC and CUDA Fortran define the underbar CUDA. Uh, so as I mentioned before, if you have uh, CUDA, you should probably use NBCC to compile that. Uh, use our NBC, which is our C compi compiler, or NBC++ to compile OpenMP or OpenACC. Uh, calling CUDA libraries with host side interfaces does not require NBCC. So the, the, the the libraries like QFFT and QRAN that we showed, you know, you're you're running that on the device, but you do not need NBCC for that. Uh, we provide the dash CUDA and CUDA lib options, uh, just provides for easier compiling and linking. Uh, one thing to be aware of when you mix CUDA compiled with NBCC and our compilers NBC or NBC++, there's this notion of a relocatable device code called RDC. Uh, our compilers, NBC and NBC++, turn that on by default because we figure for our HPC applications, uh, people are usually calling you know, lots of functions from different files uh, in those types of applications. NVCC, the CUDA compiler is, uh, uh, doesn't feel like making that assumption. And for performance, no RDC actually can perform slightly better than RDC. A few more optimizations can occur in the code generation during the, the various phases of assembly. So be aware of that. There are options on all compilers to turn on and off relocatable device code. And uh, the people at NERSC who are attending some of our calls know that you know, our, our, some of our slides have C++ standard par, interoperability with pragma-based data directives. Uh, that's a hard problem and, and not available yet. Uh, so C++ standard par still requires managed memory. Uh, it's, it's hard because a lot of the C++ parallel algorithms are just kind of handled in header files with metaprogramming, and the compiler doesn't really have a chance to really interject itself to help out with, you know, looking up into the present table, which I've mentioned a few times, to know, you know, how to get the, the device address for a corresponding host array. So, uh, again, there's there's more work for us to be doing here as well. In Fortran, uh, uh, similar to C++, I mentioned our Fortran compiler, NV Fortran, compiles all models uh, across languages. Fortran calling C is pretty well defined. As is CUDA Fortran calling CUDA C. We've got lots of examples of that in our packages, and we've had blog posts over the years how to do that. Uh, our NVIDIA HPC SDK contains Fortran modules for interfacing to the CUDA libraries, and that list is growing constantly. So we're up to like Fortran modules for eight or 10 libraries now, Kublas, QFFT, QSolver, QSparse, QTensor, NVTX, NVSchmem, Nickel, um, know, maybe I've left a few out there. So uh, if you're a Fortran programmer and you're making use of some of those CUDA libraries, I really recommend you use the dash CUDA lib option because some of those interfaces require 
an extra wrapper library. So sometimes we can't just call directly in the library. A lot of times it's for Fortran when you have to return or pass a uh, C character string. You know, we, you have to kind of fix that up between the two languages. So there's a little bit of extra wrapper required and we take care of that with the CUDA lib option. <clears throat> um, because OpenMP defines a host fallback mode, some cases which work with OpenACC plus CUDA are not quite right yet uh, with OpenMP plus CUDA, but we're working on it and I think we can solve that problem. We just have to get to all of the cases. And as I mentioned yesterday, uh, for interoperability, we still need to figure out if and how we allow non Fortran standard features in do concurrent for things like calling CUDA uh, functions if we want to, or expressing a, a launch configuration. You know, I will say, you know, we don't add the capability to change the launch configuration to OpenACC or OpenMP because it's just fun. <laughs> we do it because people have required it. <laughs> Real applications need control over that. So to think that you can, you know, port a real application to do concurrent without it is just to say, well, I'm willing to give up some performance. I don't know that people are willing to say. And that's all I have. Thank you. I think we've given you a good overview of uh, the tools in the HPC SDK from top to bottom. I hope you've enjoyed it. So we've provided some labs. They're very simple. I've uh, written several versions of the, kind of the, the Laplace, which was some of the examples I gave with the OpenMP with or without, re well, they have a reduction in one loop, not a reduction in another loop. Uh, I have host code versions of them. You can compile just on the host. And if you want to start with that, you can insert your directives yourself if you want to try different things. And then we've provided a handful of different uh, solutions to that. I did them all kind of quickly yesterday. Some of them might be a little buggy or off, but um, they're basically correct. You should be able to get the gist of what we're trying to show. <clears throat> Thank you.